All right, Diebold is best known for making ATMs, security systems, and voting machines. Last week, the company reported strong earnings, $47 million up from a loss of $6 million in the same period last year. But challenges remain. In the past year, the company has faced SEC investigations, and the stock has just been downgraded by J.P. Morgan from neutral to underweight. With us now is the CEO of Diebold, Thomas Swidarski. And, Tom, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I, I, the first thing I think of uh, when, I, when I look at this story is the cash machine story because I know that I paid two fifty three dollars mm. every time I pull out money and I've been using cash a lot more ever since the credit crisis I can't be the only one no not at all and uh, globally there's about two million ATMs installed and that number is projected to grow to close to three million by uh, 2015 and as, as part of it is not only just the technology itself but all the services that surround it, which is really what we are focused on as a company. I mean, that's a bigger part of your business, or you want it to be. Yes, absolutely. So today, if you looked at our third quarter results, and you look year to date, you would say that over half of our revenue comes from recurring revenue of service and services. And traditionally, that's been a service contract on a, on a piece of technology like an ATM. But in the future, it's much more in terms of all the other enhancements to make the ATM do the types of things banks want it to do. Talk to us a little bit about the global mix versus kind of the domestic mix. I mean, sure. Turkey's a hot spot for you guys, from sure. what I understand. Yeah, we've been very fortunate in terms of Diebold's a 151-year-old company. So the first 140 years were really U.S.-centric. Right. But today we're about 50-50 in terms of total revenue outside the U.S. and inside the U.S. So we've grown significantly outside the U.S. You would say Brazil, you'd say China, you'd say parts of Europe like Turkey and Italy or France have been a much bigger part of our, our most recent past and certainly be a bigger part of our future. Now, what are, are they adding uh, new ATMs or are they upgrading yeah. to the kind of modern ATMs that we've become used to now that do everything from reading checks to making deposits and transfers? So, so I would say in the United States, a, a mature market. So parts of Western Europe are very mature, so they're looking at enhanced functionality. You have other markets like Indonesia, Vietnam. China, which are really just exploding and growing in terms of, of functionality. But the functionality that's required around the world on the deposit automation front is a little bit different. Some have checks, some don't. Some recycle cash, some don't. But the movement in terms of more functions out of the ATM uh, than has historically been just cash dispensing is kind of the key. You know, it's interesting to talk to you because you play into the financial sector, obviously, and in terms of what consumers are doing and the demand for, for ATMs. What do you see over the next 12 months or so? We're trying to get ideas of visibility when it comes to the financial sector, to the consumer. From, based on what you're seeing, what does it tell you? Well, we're seeing, uh, much like we saw in the third quarter, pretty strong order growth worldwide. And for us, 2009 was a difficult year from the standpoint of banks were, I think, frozen in terms of mm -hmm. they had so many issues they were dealing with. We're starting to see now investment back in technology and automation, trying to take cost out, preserve capital. So a lot of our solutions play into that front in terms of offloading their capital uh, expense to uh, an, an operating lease on an ongoing basis. So they're spending money. You see financial firms spending money at this yes, point, banks specifically. We're starting to see banks of, of all varieties beginning to spend more than they have. Well, what's the trend as far as what people uh, are doing to pay for things? I mean, I'm sure the credit crisis prompted a lot of people to stop using credit cards and use more cash, but of course the mm -hmm. entire right. society is shifting more towards uh, a plastic kind of system, right? right? I mean, yeah. how does that affect the business? Yes. So we've been fortunate. I mean, when you look at it, the, the number of transactions has increased, but Credit increased, debit's now exploding. There's more cash and currency in circulation in the United States and the world than there's ever been. So the need for cash, the anonymity and the other advantages of using cash have never, been, uh, have never been stronger. And so that bodes well for the basic function. But the other thing is the enhanced capability of, of over 50 billion times a year someone goes to an ATM. So the ability to interact one-on-one -on -one marketing becomes more and more but, important. But more and more we're uh, looking at technologies that will allow us to pay with things, for things with our cell phones. Debit Correct. cards have become uh, mm -hmm. now just Absolutely. the new check. Yeah. Uh, are you concerned that over time the use of cash is phased out? No. Uh, I think what you're recognizing is much like internet banking, Everybody was going to be internet banking. The, the security issues are overwhelming issues for many people today. So the more you do over the internet, the more security risk that people have, the more cash becomes more and more relevant. Plus, being able to handle credit better, you know, cash becomes an important role. All right. So what becomes 
important to your growth going forward. And I think about this because you guys rejected an offer from United Technologies back in 2008. Correct. Is, is an acquisition or being acquired part of the strategy potentially? Well, I think the good news for us is, I mean, we've been in business 151 years. We faced all sorts of challenges over the, over the, the lifetime. We have everything we need to create shareholder value going forward. Organically, you can, you can create a all that growth? Absolutely. We've got a tremendous reputation in the financial industry. We're diversifying through security into the retail industry. Uh, we do business within government sectors and also critical infrastructure. So we've got tremendous opportunities right in front of us. And I think both from the order standpoint as well as revenue, we're in pretty so, good shape. So just quickly, no, you wouldn't be open to a deal? I think much like anyone else, we want to create shareholder value. We'd evaluated that at the time. But I think the good news for me is I don't need that. We've got the capability within the organization to do it organically. Got it. Tom, thank you so much. Tom Swidarski of Diebold. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. being here.